A brand new series checks out all those high profile things that seemed like a good idea at the time. That's in half an hour on BBC One. A magnificent setting, two great teams, what drama here. It's right for Arsenal, in right yet again. Not good. Tuffle's got him. Oh, way! Oh, dear. Hand up and that! And here comes Hurt. He's got some people on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. all over. This week's sports headline, Sven, Joran Eriksson and Nancy are back together and she says that they plan to marry just as soon as she's found a nice church, a suitable hotel and four really ugly bridesmaids. <laughs> and Michael Owen finally started a game for Real Madrid but picked up an injury, not during the match, he just fell off his seat when he heard his name called out. <laughs> With Ian and Rory is a BBC Sports presenter who's a big fan of fast bikes, fast cars and fast planes, all of which she's got waiting outside in case Rory breaks his restraining order. <laughs> Susie Perry. <laughs> With Phil and Jonathan is a polo player, racing driver and supermodel who recently flattened a moped rider with her Maserati. He only <laughs> suffered a slight injury to his foot but still demanded that she gave him the kiss of life. <laughs> Jodie Kidd. <laughs> we kick off with a polo question. Phil, Jonathan and Jodie take a look at this. Here's some action from one of the world's oldest sports where man, woman, horse and mallet work in perfect harmony. But a hoo-ha broke out recently at the prestigious Duke of Wellington Cup in which Prince Harry was playing when 15 nuns were ejected from their seats. So why all the polo aggro, Phil's team? A hoo-ha? A hoo-ha. A hoo-ha. What's a, what's it's a, a polo team? term. Oh, is it? A hoo-ha. A hoo-ha. Hoo why do they need to wear goggles playing polo? Because it protects from the ball hitting your face. You've got to wear goggles to play conkers now, apparently. Yeah, I'm upset about that. That's, that's yeah. rubbish, isn't it? That is rubbish. Why we is played conkers for years at my school and it was a great, healthy pursuit. It was available to the working-class youth with no, you know, you don't need a ground to play, you don't even need a ball, just a bit of string and a conker. And, you know, no one was damaged. You should ask the school champion, one I McGee. He had a... <laughs> Nuns. Okay. It's the church. Have you so ever thought got... of entering the church, Phil? Sh what, Charlotte? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jodie, you are a sportswoman, though, aren't you? To say the polo oh, and yeah. stuff, but you've now you're, you're you're more racing now, aren't you? Yeah, you I now car. race race cars. I race for Maserati. You race for Maserati. Yeah, and a series called the Maserati Trofeo. Oh, wow. And yeah. is that where you hit the, uh, the moped driver? No, that was not. Oh, was the moped, you don't catch moped drivers round, round tracks, no. Oh, don't not you? really, no. Although, it's if they're running late and the pitcher has to be there in 30 minutes, they'll nip on them. I think mopeds are harder to ride than the flash yeah, vehicles really you're on and I Susie rides it. the big bikes. You don't have the skill for a moped, if you don't mind me saying. I do mind you saying. 49 cc's between your legs is much harder than 250. <laughs> <laughs> and I know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about nuns. No, I'm no. thinking of one eyed McGee and his <laughs> <laughs> Do you get trouble at polo matches though? Do you get not really. Well, even when Millwall are playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the mallets would have caused trouble. Yeah, I, thought so. <laughs> yeah, I they bet fight, you. They fight on the pitch, but you don't really get kind of riots in the in the grandstand. I went on the horse once and I was thrown repeatedly by it. Repeatedly? Repeatedly, yeah. He threw me, I got back on, he threw me again. I got back on, he threw me again. The bloke went, no, get back on, show who's boss. I said, I think we've established who's boss. <laughs> you know, the, the ball sometimes hits the players. Has a game ever had to be stopped because the polo ball, because they hit him really hard, mm. hit the horse in the cock? <laughs> <laughs> Ian Wright's sporting chat show. <laughs> right to the heart of the sporting matters. <laughs> If there was a free kick and all the horses were in the walls, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
and it's just, why not? Oh, I said, right, so, no. but imagine if, if the ball actually sort of hit any of the players in the mouth, they wouldn't sound any different, would they? They'd st still sound just as posh. I know what this is. This harks back, surely without doubt, Nick, and you'll back me up on this, to the lifelong, well, centuries old battle between the royal family and the church, between the secular and religious aspects of our country. Who amongst us has forgotten Henry II's I statement? I Who will rid me of this turbulent priest, followed by the death of Sir Thomas Abeckett? Henry VIII it. and the dissolution of the monasteries. That's the death of Charles I and the rise of the English Revolution. Absolutely I think we're talking here about royalty versus church. It's the same old story. I think Harry put his hand down the habit and tried to get hold of some Catholic doublets. <laughs> And then it was hushed up, and the nun sent out, and Harry, good boy. No. I wonder where they were when they got thrown out. That's a good question. Maybe oh. they were kind of, because Harry was playing, maybe they were kind of like in the royal box or something, or where they shouldn't have been. Ah, they got a bit pushy. They got pushy. And they went and, and sat they in the front seats. So, yeah. In the Queen's seat. Um, we're on the guest list under God. Yes. <laughs> Maybe they didn't have the right tickets. tickets Passes. Pass Is badges. The answer for three well, done, well, well done. Well done. Well done. It was all because the nuns from the Sisters of Charity had made the unforgivable mistake of sitting in the members' enclosure without wearing the correct badges. Luckily, resident Jobsworth, Lieutenant Colonel George Cooper, head of the prestigious Guards Polo Club, was on hand to move them into the appropriate seats. <laughs> the rampaging nuns got into more trouble later on when they were thrown out of the clubhouse by a steward pointing to the sign that says, No work clothes. <laughs> The Argentinians are regarded as the world's best polo players, although they have lost a lot of respect since the infamous 1986 Hoof of God incident. <laughs> Ian, Rory and Susie, it's a football question for you. Here are Nigeria's Super Eagles toiling away in this year's African Cup of Nations. But, despite being one of Africa's top footballing nations, the Nigerian sports authorities have been less than chuffed with the team's exploits. But why, Ian's team? We're talking about football in the third world, and you can't call it third world now. You have to call it the Coca-Cola Champion League 2 world. <laughs> <laughs> but, Susie, great to have you on the show. The sexiest thing from Wolverhampton since Noddy Holder. I think you'd agree. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're overdoing yachting for the Olympics, weren't you, for the BBC? I was, yes, at the Olympics. That was, uh, that was good. What's the matter with that? You're a fan of yachting? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's always bothered me. Why do they spell yacht like that? <laughs> what? what do you mean? What do you mean? It's just a ridiculous way to spell yacht. What, why? How would you spell yeah, it? Y-O-T. <laughs> honestly, no, you know... Hang on a minute. Your surname... Uh. R right. 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 Well, you'd spell it R I T E, wouldn't you? It no. does spell it that way. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have silent letters in words? But well, Jonathan doesn't, doesn't have any, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of words in our language from, uh, from other languages. Yeah, we? from other it's countries. A lot of French it's words. Ridiculous. Like... Here's something for you then. When you go to the airport, when you're going on your holes, mm -hmm. where do you go and get your money from? Bureau de Change. Bureau de... Bureau de... Bureau de... Bureau de... Bureau de... Bureau de change means the dressing room, doesn't it? No, it's not. I'm just... No, Rory, don't confuse me. <laughs> Why didn't we have to have I know, I'm French not, words the, the, the in our is, language? Bureau de change. Bureau de change. People just do not yeah. like change. <laughs> <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, well, you think know? of all these expressions we have, like... Um, What's the, what's the French for deja vu? De is deja vu our right word? <laughs> Truth is, we, well, it is we, we have a lot of French words in our language, and I'm, sorry, I'm a big fan. I hate the French language. I really loathe the French language. I studied it at, at university, and I loathe oh. it, and I prefer the English language, because the English language, the English language has a je ne sais quoi, which the French language... <laughs> Susie, did you like yachting? Did you understand yachting before you got the call to cover it for the Olympics? Or did you just sit down and watch a few episodes of Howard's Way? <laughs> <laughs>
You didn't have a clue, did you really? No one has. You can never can tell you where they bloody won in those events. Yeah. The only time you know when someone's won is when they unfurl the bloody flag and play the national anthem. <laughs> Do you remember in the middle of wacky races when they did that overview and all the cars were going yes, in different yeah. directions yeah. like that? That's what sailing's like, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. Bollocks. OK. <laughs> Who before the Olympics had heard of a, an ingling? I always thought ingling was what South ingling. Africans called fishing. You know, I'm going ingling. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should talk a bit about bikes because I'm your, you know, it's Miss Superbike, and you're, you've got a few bikes, haven't you? Uh, yes. Yeah, you, oh, yeah, you've got a bike. My pride and joy. You've my got a chopper. Massive. So I'm here. <laughs> it's uh, honestly, John. Do you see it in papers? Yeah. I'm seeing it. It in is massive, and it's got stabilisers as well. Got, it's, got, <laughs> <laughs> it's got a 45-inch rake. The front wheel's down there, and I look really cool. Right. The one with the you hand know what? You've got to be careful because yeah. you're just one monocle away from being Chris Eubank. Yeah. You know? No. No. no, no. <laughs> Yeah, be careful. All that! All that! Okay. So, the Nigerian footballers. <laughs> what about them? Right, uh, were the um, authorities in Nigeria irritated with the senior Nigerian players because they were organising a Ron Atkinson testimonial? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it was the Minister of Information who's called Otunba or Selegu Nrunchenwe. And, and, the, and the sports minister, um, Ahmed Lawan, said that braided, <laughs> braided hair, as sported by JJ and... And Carmen, earrings. And earrings, um, promoted uh, effeminacy and homosexuality in young Nigerians. I'll give you a very suspicious three points. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little too perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. In fact, it's all due to their flamboyant hairdo. Some Nigerian sports administrators think players with braided hair and dreadlocks should be banned as it makes them look gay. According to a government official, a Tumba Olusegun, the braiding of hair and earrings have a sense of homosexuality. <laughs> Brian Robson was recently linked with the job of managing the Nigerian national team, but he didn't get the post when he failed to tip X out some unfortunate details on his CV. The words Middlesbrough and Brian Robson. <laughs> Today's footballers endorse a wide range of hair products. David Beckham recently advertised Brill Cream, and after his £13 million move to Real Madrid, Jonathan Woodgate's new slogan is, Because I'm not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, Phil's team has three points, and Ian's team has three points. Time to get the sweat glands going now as we play the physical challenge. This week, we've brought back the tricycle, so if you could bring that on, please. Again, the harder you cycle, the quicker you'll see the pictures. It's going to be captains and guests this week, so Susie and Jody, you're both going to be having a go. Ian, your time starts now. Go on, Ian. What's that? Guy, it's. Uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> it's Walter. It's Walter. Is it Steve Bull? It's Billy, Steve Bull. Steve Bull is correct. Steve Bull, well done. Steve Bull. That's that chopping you're posting about. It's the Cactus. It's the Cactus. It's the Cactus. West, West, Toribo West. Toribo West is correct answer. Well done, Ian. He's a West Brom player. No. Come it's, on, right? It's, it's, um, can't go any faster than that. <laughs> Who is that? It's Tanny Gray Thompson. Tanny Gray Thompson, well done. Very good. Yeah, well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley. Shirley Roberts. Shirley Roberts. Well done. Hey. Hey. Well done. Hey. Well done. Hey. Well done. Oh, look at that. Let me oh. sit down quick. Those oh, shoes God. are perfect, Susie. Oh, look at that shoes on, look. Go, oh, Susie, go, oh, baby. Go, oh, oh, Susie. Oh, oh, it's a nun. Who is it? It's Colin Jackson. Jackson. Colin Jackson. Jackson's correct. Oh, good. 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 Start. Oh, lovely. Beautiful, Sue. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Kevin Keegan. Kevin Keegan is correct. Susie, take it. Move it. Go on, Susie. Leave that bit. You'll find it's easier. Lee Westwood. Lee Westwood. Very good. Why are we doing the breaking? Did you just stop for corners or something? I just, no, I just stopped because, you know, I, when I'm doing stuff, I like to, you know, my imagination takes over and I thought there was someone crossing. Right. <laughs> okay, ready, Phil? Yeah. And then Jody, time starts now. Go you got to make sure you're hydrated. You've got to watch, haven't you? Who's that? Hold it. It's a nun, it's a nun, it's a nun. It's a nun with no... I got no, it. Chris Charles! Chris Charles! 
You look like a nun. Quick, go, go, go. Faster, oh. Phil, faster, faster. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. No, but it's a nun. I'll give you a nun. It's a nun. Another nun. You look a lot like Mother Teresa. They all look alike to me, though. Go, Phil. Who's that? It's a golf person. No, it's not, is it? Kirsty Gallagher. Kirsty Gallagher. Thank you, that's all. Jory, well done. Well done, Go, 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 go. Go on, What's wrong with you? Get a move on. Have some water. Calm down. You're going to get all the your legs. Prince John again. No, it's not. It's a... It's Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney, correct. Well done. Go on, keep that, Joe. Keep that. Wally Barker. Corbett. Lester, Lester, Lester. Arsini Venga. Let's yes. pick up. Let's pick up. <laughs> Let's go, Jody. Keep going. going. Go on, Jody. It's go on, Jody. Keep pedaling along. Long. In this. It's uh, <laughs> Arthur Ash. No. Gaza. Ashley Giles. Ashley Giles. So, at the end of all that, Phil's team has 10 points and Ian's team has 10 points. Woo! Now, round three is the treble, where sports personalities are paired up with objects. Ian's team, your subject for the treble is unfortunate comparisons, and your three are... Celebrity clothes horse and occasional footballer David Beckham. <laughs> Upgraded to gold, three-day eventer, Leslie Law and friend. And all-round Slim Jim golfing hero, Colin Montgomery. But which one was compared to Red Adair? Who was likened to Forrest Gump? And which one was compared to our very own Phil Tufnell? Oh, Ian's team. Must That's have been you. Beckham, Tufnell. <laughs> <laughs> When that picture was taken. Oh, who was You don't want to know, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Uh, He's fighting with a pepper. It might be Beckham and um, Red Adair, because I know that Beckham's a big fan of Red Adair. He says, I like him. He's in all his old films with Ginger Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> He's an ethics boy, Beckham. He's probably a bit, a bit common for you, isn't he? And mm -hmm. not common enough for Susie. Oh, <laughs> slap him. I think so. Give him a women. good you... bitch slap. <laughs> Girls, really, David Beckham, he'd be a disappointment, wouldn't he? Because imagine that you've got a date with David Beckham, on the sly, obviously, you know, because that's the way he works. Um, and so... <laughs> so you wait for the bar and he comes in, he looks fantastic, doesn't he? I mean, he looks... Imagine me, say, two years younger. He walks in... <laughs> maybe two pounds lighter. <laughs> he walks in, looking great, he comes in, he's all to the table, he's sitting there, he comes in, Oh, hi, how you doing? <laughs> You look hot tonight. Are we still talking about you two years ago or David? <laughs> is it the horse we're comparing? Um, oh, yeah, is it the or, horse or, it the... or him? Because if it's a horse, it's Phil Tuffle. They both like grass. <laughs> <laughs> we're not a million miles from getting that one right. I would have thought it was because of something else, actually. <laughs> Someone else has to put his shoes on for him. Yeah. <laughs> What is he, a, a horse jumper or something? Because I'm not... Uh, what's it's it, it's called three-day event. Three three what's a three-day event? Apart from Henman's Wimbledon fortnight, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't have that. Henman's going to win this year, ladies and gentlemen. I feel can't confident. win this year. This year's already been. Well, don't prove me wrong too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just sat on a carrot, actually, in that photo. No, oh, well, <laughs> well, well, Phil, welcome. Phil, the question was asked about 15 minutes ago. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Come on, guys. Right, David Beckham's David Beckham. got to be Forrest Gump. Hasn't Why? Why? For the keep on running line. We think um, Monty is, <laughs> is um, Red Adair. So we assume that Phil Tuffle is something to do with that horse rider. Three points out of three, well done. Yeah. In fact, David Beckham was likened in the Spanish press recently to Forrest Gump for running around to no great purpose, as Susie said quite rightly. Oh, Ryder Cup stalwart Colin Montgomery was compared to oil rig troubleshooter Red Adair coming to Europe's rescue whenever they needed it. Oh, and gold medal equestrionist Leslie Law compared his mount, Sheer Low, to Phil Tufnell because he is a joker, handsome and kind, he's a bright horse, but likes to fool around. Oh. <laughs> 
Cody to his handlers, the snorting, nostril flaring, grass chewing beast is best when kept on a tight rein, but we have no data on the horse. <laughs> It's been reported that Victoria Beckham recently called David an Essex job. He was so shocked at the suggestion that he nearly crashed his Burberry print Ford Capri. <laughs> <laughs> During his career, Red Adair earned over $50 million, $5 million from putting out oil fires, and the rest in the traditional firefighter's way, by driving a taxi in the afternoons. <laughs> Full steam, your subject for the treble is ropey advertising, and your three are... Blue-blooded oarsman and serial gold medal bagger Matthew Pinsent. Aussie savaging cricket legend Ian Beefy Botham. And Ian Wright. But which one made some cash flogging carpets? Who's promoting tissues? And which of the three extols the virtues of properties in Spain? Phil's team. That's right. Is what, that is that, is that? Yeah, yeah, is that when you're in an edition of Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> if ever you want to do an impersonation of Ian Botham, just yeah. look at yourself in the back of a spoon. It's a yeah. dead ringer. Look at it. <laughs> 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 hey, wait a bit. <laughs> We've all done adverts, of course, over the years. Phil, of course, uh, you've seen him on the uh, Booper posters. He's the face of Booper. He's the before part of the advert. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Phil has done some adverts, and he's, he's no, winning. No, you know, he's winning an award. I've heard about uh, this. What's this award you win? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. What is it? What is it? It's loans.co.co.uk. Hang on. What Andy right. codes? I don't know. I never got it right. It took two days to. <laughs> <laughs> I had to sit on the chair. I had to sit on the chair. Loans? I know nothing about loans. <laughs> <laughs> but Sally does from loans.co.co.co. <laughs> There's people out there. The only one it made any sense to was Gareth Gates. He got it immediately. <laughs> Well, I've seen you on Crime Watch, I've, but I've seen uh, you doing other stuff as well. <laughs> <laughs> well with, with some considerable irony, I actually did the adverts for um, getting in your tax returns you did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Got paid yeah. in cash, obviously, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's wrong. Naming things on TV just to get cash, I think is absolutely wrong. And I give you, I give you my <laughs> pledge yeah. that I will personally <laughs> stop any attempts to, however bold, <laughs> to get me involved in naming going. things for cash here on the BBC because it's against the BBC rules and even I can't escape the long arms of Lenore. So I... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We reckon Pinsent got to be the, with the tissues. Got to be the tissues, yeah. and he's crying his eyes. And what's that? Beefy's done it with Beefy's that. Beefy's done Spain, hasn't he? And then what? Yeah. Carpets with writing. Three out of three, well yeah, done. Yeah, we'll be In fact, following his tearful reaction to winning gold, Matthew Pinson has been signed up to advertise Kleenex tissues. Ian Botham advertises hot properties in Spain, and former Arsenal and England hero Ian Wright was once persuaded to get down on his hands and knees in the cause of carpet rights. <laughs> Can you imagine coming home and finding him doing that on your floor? <laughs> Ian Wright's old club Arsenal is about to move into a new state-of-the-art ground. Much of the money has come from a super-rich benefactor. We don't know who it is, but interestingly, the ground's going to be called the Mrs Ray Parlour Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Matthew Pinsent will always be remembered for crying uncontrollably at the Olympics, bright red cheeks and tears pouring down his face. It was just like his first night at Eton. <laughs> When David Beckham moved to Real Madrid, Hot Properties suggested several luxury villas in Spain. They also found the perfect place for Michael Owen to stay. They just put a roof over the substitutes bench. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team has 13 points and Ian's team has 13 points. We finish the show with the name game. This week, Rory and Jonathan will be drawing the clues. The team in front goes first, which is neither team, so alphabetically, if you could pass those along to Rory, oh. please. That'd be great. OK, as many names <laughs> as you can in the commensurate amount of time. Time starts now. Uh, OK. Oh. 
Is that a, a traffic light? This, no, the, the Olympic track. Well, no, not really. So, How about I'll just finish drawing this? <laughs> Stadio. Uh, is it in the name of what? What's the, all that? <laughs> uh, the, the Bernabeu Stadium. Yeah, correct. Okay. Michael yeah. Owen. Very correct. Oh, oh come on, <laughs> Eve. Get on with it, bro. I do. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that wasn't the Bernabeu. Go, golf a, club. OK, golf, yeah. Colin Montgomery! No, hang on. Smoking weed. Colin Montgomery smoking weed. <laughs> Not exactly weed, more of a cigar, actually. Call it Darren Clark! Oh, yeah. God bless you. Why am I shouting? OK, here we are. Just uh, realised. Just excited, that's nice. I'm, I'm, I'm just it's get nice. so excited oh, about really stuff. Fantastic. You're enjoying yourself. A, a gold, is it someone... A gold, gold digger. Yeah. Rebecca Lewis! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was a gold, gold digger. Oh, with Ben Ainsley. Oh, ben Ainsley. Matthew Bissett. Ben Ainsley. <laughs> a man bending over naked. <laughs> a woman <laughs> bending over naked. <laughs> Bags of money. OK, good. Roman Abramovich. No, this is... <laughs> well, it could have been. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. Maybe it's still Why are you taking so long? <laughs> calm, really, calm, calm. Really, too much detail in the pictures, Rosa. <laughs> David Beckham! No. What's Michael that? Owen! What's he got on his shirt, Ian? Oh, Thierry Henry! No. Okay. Ray Parler! Correct. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Should have done a minus sign, Okay, five. Five will win it for you. This huh? is the best chance you can have. Come on, have. we can't. Come on, come on. Five will do it. Jody, we're counting on you. We need Jody. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm holding him, holding him. Okay, okay, okay. now. Go, go. Um, ears. Prince Charles. Oh, well done. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on. All right, this is a difficult one. Here, look, lots of cigar. Don't let them wait. Don't let them wait. A woman, a woman smoking. No, no, no. Droopy no. tits. Uh, <laughs> me. What's that? Banana um, breasts. I know who it is. What's that? I know who it is. Me. Yeah. No. What's that? I mean, a woman having a wee. <laughs> no. <laughs> Someone what? smoking. He's pushing without someone in a wheelchair. Look, he's doing oh, it. No. oh, Tanya Harding. No, it's who's this? Who's this? What's that? Who's Jimmy this? Shavel. Yes, I didn't know. Jimmy Shavel. Jimmy Shavel. Jimmy Shavel. Jimmy Shavel. Oh, no, go right, yeah. He goes on a marathon. Oh, here we go. You'll Jimmy like this fella. Tanya. Um, and um, Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney. Oh, he's a champion. Yo, I'm fire tonight. Here we go. One, two. Three. Oh, no, Matthew no, Pinson. No, no, no. Who won like the uh, medals? I know who the other no, one is. No, the other one, the woman. The no, woman. Um, Kelly Holmes. Kelly Holmes. No, no. Um, 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 Kelly Slayer. Now, um, hold on. on. <laughs> what is it? Oh, I know who it is. Is it a... Is Tammy, it a, Tammy, Tammy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Tammy, 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 Oh, uh, oh, um, um, Chipper uh, Funnel, Pippa Tunnel. Pippa Tunnel. Pippa Tunnel. Pippa Tunnel. Leslie Law. Um, Leslie Law. Uh, Come on, this is your time up now. No tax. No tax. Uh, no uh, Prince Charles. No tax. Uh, <laughs> no. Let's do bigger. Yes, that's the bigger. Yes, the bigger. Well done. Oh. Well done. We might have got that. So, at the end of all of that, Ian's oh, no. team has 17 points, but this week's winner is Phil's team with 18. <laughs> So thanks to Ian, Rory and Susie, Phil, Jonathan, Jody. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Some might wish it was all over. A brand new series charts high-profile expensive blunders. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Next on BBC One. And then brace yourselves, ladies, as Jude Law joins Jonathan Ross, who's back for film 2004 at 11.35.